Hello everybody, how's it going? And welcome to episode 3 of Off the Battlefield, the bi-weekly uh, Smash UK podcast featuring myself, Scroll from Newcastle. And me, Lorenzo, from London. And this week we have two very, very special guests from uh, the North West. So guys, if you would like to introduce yourself, Ben, do you want to go first, mate? Yep. Um, hi, I'm Ben, or Bullet Bill, as most people in the scene know me. I've uh, been a North West player for a long time, been playing melee for a long time. I'll play PM, uh, a part of 8-Bit Planet's Rare Candy. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Hi, uh, I'm uh, Fishy Corn, or as many of you used to know me as Ico. Um, I've been in the smashing pretty much the same amount of time as uh, Bullet Bill has. So we're coming on to, like, so 8, 9, 10 years now. Don't know how long. Damn, um, old school. I think it's about 8 yeah, years. No. Yeah. That's yeah, a long time, man. Huh? Been playing, what, Melee for that long. Um, <laughs> Project M playing the new Smash 4 and played a bit of Brawl back, back in the day but not for me anymore so yeah I've been in this game for a, a long time and uh, yeah we, we used to run the North West North West uh, scene for oh, for almost as long as we've been part of the Smash scene really just utter control <laughs> <laughs> yeah well it used to be um, well going way back now it used to be like uh, was it STFU SDFU and Matt yeah. had uh, you all know Blood Bowl don't you yeah yeah. yeah. he used to be in that crew um, I, I think he, it was like him and Joe that pretty much like ran there are a lot of players that aren't around anymore <laughs> oh yeah. sad times I think Blood Bowl and, and JO3 or Joe are, are the main ones that are still around um, and yeah they used to like run the Northwest, and then like we kind of took over after we started getting like really active and they started settling down a little bit mm. so yeah Okay, nice. Well, ge- well gentlemen, gentlemen, it's a pleasure to have you, and let's jump straight into results. So, Lorenzo, do you want to talk us through what happened at Meltdown? Yeah, um, last week was the um, was my second um, Project M tournament we had at Meltdown. In fact, it was the first. Well, it's it's actually it's the first it's it's, it's the first Project M tournament we've had that's been um, a full a proper coin legal. Um, prize pot tournament Damn. um like so I, thought, I, thought, I think it was anyway and i'm i'm trying to remember but i'm yeah i'm pretty sure P- it's the first pm one we've done with with coins mm, yeah it was and um yeah so the so you know it was also i'd like to point out the um i'm pretty sure the first 3.5 tournament in the uk um i, I think, it, think it probably was yeah Possibly. yes so you know we had a good turnout 20 um well, twenty twenty six entrants, and um, it was yeah, you know, it, we 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 had a lot of it was pretty stacked, if I'm honest. Like, um, yeah, man, just looking at, looking at these top three results, like Swizzy and Jelly in top yeah. two, which I don't think anyone's surprised by, to be honest with you. No, it was um, I mean, but they're all then also, I mean, in terms of who was there, like we had um Luigi Mitsu was there as well. Um, Kong was as he oh, and her, and, I was just and gonna her. ask you if Kong was there, I was curious. Yeah, he um okay, so we'll go into results. I mm. mean in terms of Swizzy dominated this tournament. Um he, he Ganon we, we've talked a bit about Ganon <laughs> we've in three point five on the three point five show. I mean. And <laughs> he um and he did very, very well. Like he you know, clean clean sweep. Um I will say that the, the 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 first set. I mean, it didn't go to a second set, but the first set of grand finals with Jelly was was a pretty close run thing. Great yeah. ending too. Like Jelly, um, Jelly uh, got how him off. Was, how was Jelly at the end of grand finals? Can I ask? A bit sorry. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I had to. I had to ask. I'm, I'm I'm not gonna lie. A little bit. I I, I don't blame him because what I was gonna say was that basically, um, he got Jelly got him off stage. It was two two. It was two up. Two two. In um in the first set of grand finals, Jelly gets him off stage. Last stock each. He's about to take him out. He misses his fair marginally, and Swizzy just down bead and killed him. Oh, <laughs> oh my man. god, spite! Yeah, yeah, he just got oh, spite wow. by the by the foot. It was, it was, it was brutal. Boot. Uh, it was brutal. Yeah, that's my exact words. Yeah. So um, he... what should we say? It was. Brutal. Brutal. Yeah. <laughs> and also, I mean, sh- yeah, but shout outs to Jelly because he actually, he arrived late, so I had to DQ him from his first game. So he, he fought his way all the way back through losers and battered a lot of people. So good on him. Damn. I mean, Mario's been nerfed a bit in PM. But... Oh, was he playing Mario? That was, that was my other yeah, question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jelly's like, he's, he's, um, he's always been a Mario main. He, he just loves Mario. 
and uh, yeah. respect to him for like for sticking with him even after the nerf after um, three point five. Yeah, massive, massive yeah. Um, respect to him, man. And then yeah, th- um, in in third we had Dakesha. Shout outs to him, Marth player. He's, um, like, and I could say he's uh, an old Southampton player, Dakesha. Yeah. He used to play quite a lot, so it was really good to see him. Uh, he is actually trained by Bullet Bill. <laughs> that's yeah. why he's. That's why he got third. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Never first. He is kind of good. He's got I that say- degree. I consider him my math mentor nowadays. I learn a lot of. I learn a lot. Also, of also a very chilled out guy. Well, yeah, you you're, you're learning off a uh, bullet bill indirectly. Then, yeah, legacy lives yes, on. Sir. Yes, I am. Legacy. God. So, um, yeah, no, it was it, it, it was very good to see. There was quite a bit of Ganon in this tournament. I will say. Wow! Surprise! Um, surprise! Ganon's I always mean, been popular, hasn't he? G- Ganon yes. is Fishy Corn's favorite character. He's, he is not, but yeah. there, yes, there, 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 is, there is a thing in the Northwest where we, we actually think we are the strongest in the Ganon Ditto matchup. For most, for most of us. That's yeah. big. Right, we're that's se- big. We're se- right, that's it. We're sending Manon from Newcastle over there. We'll see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Manon, yeah have, any of you, what about, have any of you played Swizzy in a Ganon Ditto? I have no intention uh, of ever playing Ganon. No. <laughs> but Ganon I'm pretty much sure. Ganon play Ganon well, though. I mean, I'm not saying we can't, but we kind of like... Uh, there's different ways of playing Ganon. There's playing Ganon kind of just YOLO-ish, and, but Swizzy, Swizzy plays him very, very perfect, well. Perfect example of that is, um, sorry, perfect example of that is in America, Kage, when you can cr- contrast people like Kage to um, Bizarro, like Bizarro is just hilarious, yeah, yeah. hilarious to watch. And then you play against, then you watch like Kage, who's like, I'm going to play smart and just destroy you, like take yeah. you apart. But when you, when you play Ganon like that, it's almost kind of boring sometimes oh, yeah. with, the, with, with the occasional flashy moment. But uh, yeah, I think like if you want to do well, you have to play Ganon like really solid because he's such a, a fundamentals character, and the shenanigans only work for so long. Oh, that's that word, yeah. fundamentals. It was it, it was it, it was quite interesting actually watching um, winners finals because um, Swizzy and um, it was just Swizzy and Acacia in winners finals. And um, and um, Swizzy played the first game quite conservatively, like um, you know he he just he he got he got his places, got very nice like edge guards, like up air edge guards, quite very they look very gentle on Ganon. I love them; they're so sort of yeah. delicate. Where he just like tips, he just like pops you with his toes, and away you go. It's, it's a little heel tickle, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's what it's what does it to you? And yeah, so he he won that game out. You know, he just looked nice. Um, solid fundamentals, Gan, and you know, not, not nothing too ridiculous. He went into the second game after being one game up and went ham, went straight for a down for a down B tech chase, got one again, like da- like then then for a boot. It was ridiculous. So yeah, he's clearly second game. You see, that's when you that's when you know your reads. That's when you get used to your opponent. Yeah, Gan can, like, can only really sorry, Ben. Sorry, um, but sorry. basically, Gan can only. Right, really get the kill moves with hard reads. He's not like a soft reads kind of character, really. You don't cover options with Ganon. You either go in or you're not. Yes, but what? Well, yeah, exactly. And Swizzy is clearly the um, is clearly comfortable in both the styles. Mm. Is what I'd say from from watching that because I think it it took me and I think it took Dakesha by surprise a bit as well. Just like how how much he went in in the second game, just to switch things up. It was impressive, definitely impressive. All right. Well, cool. Congrats to uh, yeah. Swizzy on the placement and to Jelly and to all that turn up to Meltdown. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I just want to say quickly that um, poor Kong got bodied. I'm just going <laughs> to say that. Oh, is it uh, because Dickie is no longer Kong. good? Uh, uh, well, he, he's, he, the, the rust is real. Like, he uh, hasn't well, been uh, fair, enough, fair enough. Did he, but, has, did he change a lot as well? Yeah, uh, but, you can't. It's hard to just... I doubt he would have practiced it that much. <laughs> no, hell, hell, hell no. I'd yeah, seen he, him... Sorry, go on. I had seen him the previous week at Meltdown, just at the friendlies, to, but I think um, to play some, and he, you know, he hadn't played in ages. Like he'd been, play, he's been playing league, I think, and um, um, yeah, he, um, he, um, he, he, he was, you know, he, he isn't, pra- he isn't practicing regularly. His character's lost a lot of what made him very good with the character because he's always, he's always been the king of the banana game. So, you know, if. Um, he's a very good item. He, you know, he's a brawl player. He's very, he's or very good. I say the Kong of the banana game. I'm done. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, but otherwise, no. It, it, it was. I mean, I'm trying to. I'm trying to remember who he like. I'm trying to remember who he lost to. But anyway, it, well, yeah. He 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 lost. He lost to um. He lost to uh, 
Jimmy JT, who's a very who's also a Ganon main, um, and has been playing Ganon since before the patch. Very very solid. So you know his character's nice and buffed up there. Shout outs to him. He did a very good placement as well. I think he ended up fifth. So good on him. Oh, cool. Um, and yeah, no, it was you know it was a good tournament. Otherwise, some good um, you know a lot of str- a lot of strong players there. I um I could have done slightly better. I I I I had a great start and then fell off a bit. Oh, well. if, like I I I beat Sergeant Snuggles. Shouts. I mean, I'm sorry about that. Oh, the, the, that's the, a very the, very impressive win. Well, no, it's not. The, 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 the matchup is so free now. <laughs> it's horrible. Like literally, Marth can do whatever he likes to this character now that now that he's lo- now that he's lost the side B pressure. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I think. Uh, hey, take the win, mate. Take the win. Yeah, I, I think a lot of the melee characters have generally gotten slightly better just because of the system oh, changes. Oh, massively. Yeah. Well, whilst they're not like direct changes because their move sets and properties are largely unchanged. Yeah, they got better by proxy with the um, exactly, universal yeah. global changes. But we'll, is, get on, we'll get on to that. We'll get on to yeah, I think it's the PM development team scheming, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Cool, anyway, anyway yeah. we'll move on. Yeah, we'll move, we'll move on swiftly to Final Destination 5, which took place in... I don't know where Cardiff. This. Cardiff. Cardiff, yes. Was it? Yeah. Oh, all right, my bad. It's the Welsh pods. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Yeah. To, um, Harvey Carmen again has been hosting those, holding oh, it down. Oh, Harvey. All right, well, shout out to Harvey then. Yeah, fair enough, man. So let's have a look at these results then for melee. So we had Frenzy first, Candy second, and Prime third. I know Candy. Well, actually, I watched the um, losers and grands of this, and uh, Bowser. Like, okay, I, cannot, I mean, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I cannot believe he got second with, with Bowser. Bowser. Mm. I mean, who, who and Bowser maybe, yeah, but yeah, like, but again, Candy is one of those who sticks to his character regardless of how good or bad they are. And he, he loves Bowser. He's, he sticks with him regardless and his you know, respects for that. Yeah, massive respect. I like Jake yeah. to O. Yeah, Jake to O. <laughs> wow. Our, our, our teammate, yeah. Oh, if it's a teammate, you can make sure he's a very him. solid player, but he doesn't stick with Bowser all the time. But I think that's a good idea. No, he, do, he, do, he does generally, but he, he does have a little uh, secondary which he um, isn't really afraid to switch to. Is it a space animal? No, it's a, it's a moth. Oh. Okay, that'll do. <laughs> Yeah, so um, Frenzy is a math player, I think, isn't he? he, he... Um, I've seen, yeah, I've seen some math from him. I've seen some. Um, Cause in the grand final, in the set. grand final set that was um, uploaded to Smashy K, which you should all be subscribed to, by the way, Smashy K on YouTube, do it. Um, he was play, yeah, in the grand final set, he played math against. Uh, I guess it might have just been because you know, Balance was basically just one big walking hurt box in this game, so it's like, okay, I can just hit you from here. But, I don't know, maybe. No, no, no I, I'm, I'm not seen as Marth. I've, I, I played a little bit against his, um, I think, his Fox in casuals. No, he's, a good, he's a good player. Very good on him, you know. You, right. I, thought, I thought he played uh, Toon Link in uh, PM, or unless you talked about Mane. Um When I played him, the only PM I've played with him was in a, was a doubles game. And he was playing Marth in that, but Marth in doubles in PM is actually pretty strong. Yeah, Marth is so, really good in doubles. If we're, if we're going to melee, like... Marth Bowser is kind of like one of those very one-sided matchups. Anyway, it's very difficult. Yeah. It's al- it's almost as bad as like Sheik Bowser or um, you know Marth Mewtwo. It's one of the the very very polarized matchups where it's, I it's think almost unwinnable. By the time you get to Bowser and those sort of characters, more or less every matchup becomes really hard, just in different ways. Yeah, they're, they're only good against they're only decent against space animals. They're not even you know more than fifty fifty really. It's just that they have things that they can do to space animals. Yeah, once you get them to um, you know, to the middle, you know, even the higher low tiers, they're, they're pretty much bottom. You can't do anything against them, really. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty sad for uh, for <laughs> it's really we're, sad not, we're not saying, we're not implying anything, Candy. You stick with Bowser, you stay at it. Oh, yeah, yeah you got this man. And Bowser proud. Um, yeah. Those your mains for life, except when yeah. you're not. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, so, on to, P- on to the PM results at Final Destination 5. Uh, Again, it was looking... Wow, Candy got second again. I would, again, presume he was playing Bowser. Uh, forever second. Yeah. And who does Prime play? Prime taking first. Shout out to him. I have no idea who Prime plays. I was he, about he, to ask as well. <laughs> but he, he, see, no, none of us know him. And yeah, he comes third in melee and first in Project M. He has, he has to have some skill. Oh, yeah, he's probably doing... He's definitely doing something right. He rings yeah, a bell. to him. Actually, wait, well, no, no, no. Prime um, in melee was playing um, Puff. So I don't know. Who he, I don't know who he's playing. Maybe Kirby. I, I don't know. Some someone floats with lots of jumps, probably. Mm. He doesn't. He doesn't have. Well, okay. so that's our guess, basically. Yeah. Well, that's my guess. <laughs> 
I'm, I, no. I'll be honest, like, I don't think any of us are too familiar with the Welsh scene. No. So, um, not no well, this is the first tournament I've ever heard of in Wales. Uh, Wales has been really inactive. It's been... Uh, I think they've been quiet. I think they may have had stuff going on, but they've just been quiet about it. Like, just on the down low. So maybe maybe Wales are just hella strong. I mean, if they've got a Bowser placing second, then that must mean that either he's really strong, or... <laughs> I'm not going to call... Sh- I'm not going to take shots. I'm not going to take shots. But, you know, Wales, travel a bit more, mate. Come on. Yeah, let's let's just say that Candy is a bit more experienced than some of the, the other Welsh players. Yeah, yeah indeed, indeed well, he is. So... Yeah. I- Oops, just, just to ask quickly, has Candy ever played Smash Four? Because he, he, has, might, he, he might as well. Like his character's good in that. Well, he um, he actually plays Wii Fit Trainer in Smash Four, or at least what? the last. The last Why? I, I, I'm, I'm not going to quote him, but I think it was something along the lines of uh, I play Bowser in every other game, so I thought I'd give someone else a try, and I quite like the look of Wii Fit Trainer, so why not? No, no I know what that is. I know what it is. Why that job, like not that. That's not the reason. The reason is low tiers cannot play a character if their character is now good. <laughs> was, yeah, actually, look at GP. Look at GP. He was saying, oh, why don't you play Ike in PM GP? Why don't you play him? And he says something like, oh, it's not my Ike. It's not how I remember it. In other words, Ike's good. <laughs> he wants to... Except, except Ike is actually not that good in, in uh, Smash 4. Yeah, he won't. Mm. He's, he's, no, he isn't. No, so he might get back. Anyway. Not in Smash Four. I mean, GP. Kind of lost, but GP plays Sonic in Smash Four, doesn't he? he, just, uh, he just... and I think this was in a uh, version one point zero three where he. Um, Sonic he's kind of ridiculous. In yeah, that Sonic. Version. But Sonic's had a bit of a hit this time in the the new patch. So he's. Uh, Sonic always has a hit. Yeah. <laughs> but he moves so fast. How can you hit him? I'm. Oh, whatever. Anyway. <laughs> that was a poor execute joke. Anyway. Uh, should we move on then to the yeah. next result, set of results, which is Rushdown Edinburgh. Uh, Indeterminate number of entrants, but we had Shifting Shadows placing first, AC Adam placing second, and Ty <coughs> placing third. So this could literally be for either Melee or PM. We may never know. Uh, well, it's I'm no gonna, surprise that Shifting guess, Shadows... Melee. Oh, yeah, maybe. Actually, yeah, because Ty Muffin, yeah. Because right. Shifting Shadows is... Uh, Shifting Shadows is insanely good. Like... I know. It's oh, he's, he's solid, solid melee player. Yeah, solid. It's it's really weird because like Scotland went quiet for a long time, and then yeah. all of a sudden it's it's just boom again, and yeah. all of a sudden Shifting Shadows is really good because we were playing him before um before that scene went quiet, and he wasn't you know particularly great then. You know, he had we knew he had a lot of potential, but he was he wasn't sh- he wasn't like performing quite he was right then. Coming, he was trading in the Highlands. That's what he did. He went to the yeah. went to the Highlands, and there was like he's. He's a really nice guy, though. Oh, um, yeah. AC Anon, actually, I don't know if any of you two have heard of him, but he's a very, very old school player. He's oh. older than us two. Yeah, and he oh, plays really? Samus. Oh, yeah. I've heard of AC Anon. I don't... I think... No, he didn't come down to KOT and That was someone else. I think that might have been um, Scribble. But, um, yeah, I've heard of AC Anon, but I haven't really like seen him play at He all. used to always place 13th. Yeah, he was He was the forever 13th. Yeah, wow. he, whenever... Because... We, um, I know uh, Fishy Corn hosted a tournament when we were in Liverpool. We used to live in Liverpool together, and uh, we used to host a few tournaments there, which were quite good. And uh, yeah, always got a thirteenth. Always thirteenth. Scotland had a decent scene. Damn. Uh, uh, but it does it does again now. To be to be fair to them. yeah, and shout out to AC uh, Allen for really you know <laughs> get it's getting higher placings than thirteenth nowadays. Mm. I think I think I've heard of Ty at some point, but I think he's I think he's all right. I don't know. I've I've heard of Ty. All right, cool. As long as someone's heard of him, <laughs> I think I've heard of him placing a placing a Scottish tournament before. Oh, fair enough. To be um, honest, I I just I don't know why what the skill gap between second and third here is because AC Anon has like quite a lot of experience. You know, he's he's been to all the tournaments in the past, and it's it's one of those things that you don't really lose. I mean, the mind games, once you're like, you know, you get your tech skill back after you, you know, you brush off the rust. Yeah. So, you know, potentially the skill gap there could be pretty huge until uh, people start stepping up their game. But it's no surprise that Shifting Shadows and uh, AC Anon are, are right at the top there. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know, they're the ones, um, I, I saw them both play at air and they're good players. I respect that. Yeah. Very, very strong. All right. So, should we move on to upcoming tournaments then, gentlemen? Yeah, so absolutely. we've got on November 30th in Bristol, Spot Dodge with PM, singles and doubles, melee singles and doubles, and Smash 4 singles. 
Um, I don't know who's going to be attending this, to be honest with you. I don't think I've heard anyone. I, um, I know Prof is going for... Prof's going, R23 is going, uh, yeah. we are going, me oh, yeah. and Vaughn. Oh, and, good luck. Uh, Can- yeah. Take two hours Candy's well. Gonna, Candy's going to be there. Oh, damn. Yeah. Uh, Sleeps Junior, who's running the... I think it's yeah, going to be a decent turnout, I think. Uh, VA, I think, would be there. Oh, is he, go- is he going as well? I didn't, I didn't uh, know he was going. I think that's a guess. I think he probably would be, though. Um, um, probably the Southampton players. I mean, I know all 23. Yeah, yeah the, some well. of the Southampton players are going, I think. Um, so I was just going to have a decent turnout, then, if it's uh, two of the three kings, or whatever we're calling them nowadays. Yeah. Oops, excuse me. All right, cool. So, so yeah. anyone, I don't have anything to say on that one. I'm not going to spot dodge. I don't think. Um, I'm probably not. It's... The only thing I, the only thing I've heard is that the, um, the guy running it's quite new to running tournaments. Oh. He decided well, to cut out doubles, which is a shame. Yeah, because everyone loves doubles. Um, I would have played in them definitely. Oh, uh, is, he cut, is he actually cut out doubles? Yes. Yeah. Oh, right. yes, yes. Base basically, um, quite a few of us in the the back room noticed that he was going to try and put on every single event possible in oh. in seven to nine hours or whatever. Would have been a lot. And we, a lot it, it's, a, it's, it's too much to take on. It doesn't matter how experienced you are. It's, it's virtually impossible to run that amount of mm. tournaments unless you've got a very, very small turnout. So, um, you know, thankfully he listened to our advice and uh, he's decided just to focus on, on the few there. And, uh, you know, it t- takes a lot of... Um, Takes a lot of guts to take that sort of criticism and uh, and act on it. So you know, really pleased with uh, with Sleeps Junior there. Yeah, shouts to that because I can imagine like if you're putting on your first tournament or you've or one of or you're new to running tournaments and you're immediately getting people saying you know you're not going to have enough like time on your hands or enough like knowledge on TOing to be able to do this. So to be able to be told that and to be able to go, all right, fine, that, that's absolutely fine, and then to cut out some events so you can accommodate for that. That's really good. Like that's a really good skill to have as a TO, just to be ex- accepting of criticism. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely got a lot of potential in terms of, uh, you know, running events. I mean, he came up to Manchester to um, to help us run the Play Expo tournament, um, and you know, because I was there, I kind of like ended up taking a little, little bit of control on it. But I tried to give him a lot, you know, as much practice as possible in terms right. of organization. But you know, that was another huge event with like. We're looking at 60 to 80 people for, for oh, Melee, Melee Project M and 3DS. And, you know, we ran over time by about an hour, which is actually, in retrospect, not all that much given how many people we had to get through. Mm. So, um, yeah, you know, it, it was a, I was, I'm sure that was a good learning experience for him. And I'm, I'm th- I think he's going to do great this time at Spot Dodge. Yeah. Mm. I've, I've I've noticed that having a look at it, that he's quite sensibly making every... Um, he's, he is running... Um, melee pm and smash four but he's running them as just straight double a limb which i think is very sensible because yeah if you've got a lot to run and it's a one day tournament then um you can risk running very far over if you do pulls it's a lot less organization if you just run a straight double elimination bracket and there's also on a sunday as well so people have you know commitments on monday they can't they have to get home as well and sleep yeah. so and it's smart move know, really smart move yeah Probably transport and so on shuts earlier. So, yeah. all right, cool. So another tournament that we've been speaking about the past uh, couple of uh, podcasts now. Beast in January. Yeah, I can say yeah. now. I am confirmed. I am hype. Very, 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 very hype. I'm hype. Uh, I'm hype. Sweden, we are coming I, for your I money. I cannot <laughs> believe how many people from the UK are going. We are. There is so there's many. A, a lot. So around that. that. I remember, I remember looking at Prof Sheet and being like, "There's around a, a sixty, a good sixty people, or sixty odd people going now." Like Let's that. get a Smash UK plane. <laughs> <laughs> should we, should yeah, I know, right? We may as well paint the logo on the outside because that's what it's going to be. It is, it's yeah. Smash I, UK I don't plane. think the um, I don't think they're going to be happy about that. If they just see a bunch of guys with like paintbrushes, like slowly <laughs> painting a Smash logo, like I don't know. If we do a good enough job, it will look like an proper airline company like anyway. a British Airways logo <laughs> so we're away with it. I don't I don't think yeah, it's a good do idea smash to UK to... Logo, yeah. I don't think it's great to call a plane smash though is it no <laughs> no, <laughs> no that's bad right. connotations wow. yeah, yeah. Oh my. the news report the plane was called smash UK <laughs> <laughs> no. 
Sounds like a uh, straight into the UK. <laughs> um, well, but really excited for that tournament. Yeah. This will be my first international, actually. Yeah, yeah. my first international. I was saying, I was, I was saying because um, a prof was talking to me and saying, "Oh, you should come, you should come." And I thought actually it would be good because I've played this long. I mean, I'm quite old now. I'm quite an old player, and I haven't been to an international yet. So, I've actually just yeah, realised that this that this international tournament is going to be my first tournament outside of the northeast. So this will oh, be right. interesting. Because oh, oh. outside of the northeast, <laughs> yeah, because I've been because all of my because like, I'm young, I'm not able to really, really travel because of money and parents and all that sort of stuff. So I'm mostly confined to northeast to uh, NEC. And then when KOTN happened, I was like, okay, this is a really good, this is a really good opportunity because then we'll get people from other regions coming in. And that was great. But now I'm like, because I remember we were talking about it in um, the Northeast Smash chat. We were talking and we were saying like, uh, and we were all saying, oh yeah, Beast is going to be so good. I'm so hyped for Beast. And then one of us, Ducker, actually said, um, isn't, it, isn't it hilarious how we're all saying that London is out of the realms of possibility, but everybody's so ready to go to Sweden. <laughs> like, travel to Stratford and then fly to Sweden. Like, good It's going to be a shock to the system, that, for you. Oh, yeah, it's going to be, like... And oh, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Oh, yeah, I can't wait, man. I can't wait. Hopefully jump on some commentary. Me and Lorenzo, OTB, taking over the commentary desk. Absolutely. <laughs> anyway. I, think it's, I think it's generally a great opportunity for the UK, I mean, we've never really had that many people going international, so... Exactly. Who have it, we had? We've had Prof, Jolteon, Fuzzy... It's only Alpha. usually... Uh, Fuzzy does a lot, and... Yeah, Fuzzy does a lot of travelling. It's and not going to be... Mouth uh, dash, it's AD. Mm, oh, AD, yeah. AD. Yeah. AD. 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 Because everyone made fun of Alpha Dash. Of course we <laughs> have. Smash. Of the of OOC. I don't care. I'll, I'll keep calling it that, because it's too yeah. funny. Anyway, yeah. uh, Fuzzy, of course, isn't going to be he Jab, is he? not. He's going he's to going HDQ. To, yeah. The one of the one player that represents us probably the most, but <clears throat> oh, but well, that's all right. That's all right. We'll go and we'll go and prove that we that we can represent ourselves. Yeah. We don't. We don't need. We'll go over and just say we don't need Fuzzy. We, we don't need the guy who plays <laughs> top thirty-two at yeah. Evo. We don't need that bloke. No. Nah, <laughs> what's a Fuzzy anyway? Uh, we got we got Prof at least. <laughs> we got, got Prof. Yeah, I, I think this is actually Smash UK's. Um, master plan to get the, the bullet bill train going so that everyone in the world would be going bullet <laughs> bill, bill, bill bullet bill, bill, bill. bill. Hey. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. that's going to happen we're all aware that's going to happen I'm gonna, I know I'm just going to be playing uh, it's going to be quite a close match and then behind me it'll just start the whole yeah. bullet bill train thing <laughs> I, hope you guys, no, I don't know whether you guys are aware of um, what have become known as my like commentary catchphrases of some of my like any smash things, but if I see Diabound playing and he does something sick, I am just going to scream Diabound at the top of my lungs because that's what I do all the time on commentary. If if um, Brandon Diabound does like an Ener Gems combo, I'll go Diabound <laughs> nice. every single time I do that, and it's getting to the point where it's like people are, like predicting it and like an any smash bingo card is like a pr- is like arisen. It's oh god, it's it's going to be good. Every Thomas Day trust that thing. Yeah. Mine is apparently really bad catch races and puns. Anyway, let's move on then to just some topics in um, general. Oh, just, just just before we um just before we go off the topic of upcoming tournaments. Go for it. Um of course um Smash Wii U is coming out on Friday. Right. And um there is a tournament running at the Heart of Gaming in London over um over the um over the weekend on Friday on Friday and Saturday. Right. I'm not sure if I'm going to be going. I'm probably going to be running House of Hype as normal, but um, just just to sh- yeah, shout-outs to them. I think GP is possibly going to be do- going to be at least in part partly running that, but that's going to be at the heart of gaming in Acton. Um, they do quite. A- they've done quite a lot of stuff with us before. It's that's, that's the same heart venue. Of gaming is a very good venue, actually. Yeah, yeah, it's they've it's been the venue for um, Smash and Dash, Super VS Battle, and so on. And um, yeah, they, they're going to they're going to be getting in. You know, I think four of Wii U setups have a tournament, have lots and lots of friendlies. So those of you who are interested in Smash Four Wii U, um, um, yeah, go get um, get along to that if you can, because that's going to be, I think, one of the best places to go and play on on the day of launch. Mm. So. Sorry if you don't if you don't mind me jumping in as well. Um, Manchester are also doing the same thing. So we've got uh, our Smash uh, Wii U launch event. Um, now that's actually on the like the, the fifth or six, sorry sixth of December. Six, yeah, six. yeah, where we ori- we had the original date, but then it got pushed forward by a week, didn't it? So we've actually booked it for the week after the launch now. But we're doing our uh, event as well. 
and uh, we're going to get about five or six Wii U's and run one big tournament there along with like some other side tournaments as well. So uh, yeah, so um, I'm going to I'm going to post um, the event on Smash UK very soon. We at the moment we've only got it open to, like to the Northwest Smash and uh, the Northwest scenes, but we're going to announce it to um, the rest of Smash UK very shortly. All right, cool. I don't know. I don't know what the Northeast is doing. I think I'm probably just going to go around to CFU's house and just bum off of his Wii U and just play on that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm, I'm going to get myself some time on that game for sure because. I just, I mean, to, to be fair, I, I, I got my, fir- I got some of my first like exposure to the game yesterday, and it is a bit weird. It feels very, very odd. Yeah, unless but, um, you've had some experience, I think with Brawl or like sixty four. I don't think people are going to be like used to this because it is a sort of weird amalgamation of the two in my eyes. But yeah, I've, I've, it's it, yeah, it's 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 different. Yeah, and I'm at least b- b- being able to play it with a GameCube controller would be nice. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> because playing on a 3DS pad feels so weird. Mm. It, it does fall a bit short sometimes. Often it doesn't do the controls that you want to, or you don't want to risk like snapping off your stick. Like I know it's happened to quite a number of people. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people. That's that's very, uh, a very common problem, sadly, with it. Mm. But yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we so if you know the Smash the Smash Four Wii U tournament's going to be coming out in force. That's going to be happening at Beast as well. For some reason, I've entered it. I don't know why. I don't I, know if anyone else I've, has. I've only entered Melee at uh, oh. Beast. Because that's I, the only game I feel confident in, to be honest oh. with you. Oh, I, I entered everything. Look, if, we, <laughs> if, 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 if we're going, if we're going all the way to Sweden, we might as well enter everything. Exactly, yeah. You might as well just throw your money away. All if, in. I, if I have some spare... Luigi yeah. If I have some spare Euros when we get there, I'll pay on the day, hopefully. Hopefully, that'll be an option. Like, here, take my money. I'll go and play some Wii U. See you in a bit. I'm gonna beat Luigi Mitsu. Shouts to him. Yo. I almost, I, 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 okay. Look, I, 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 I almost had him in um in in PM last week in um at meltdown last week. I'll, I'll get him next time. <laughs> Shouts to Mitsu. Um. Okay. Are we gonna talk about three point five? Let's talk about three point five. Yeah, so three point five has been out for a couple of days now. If not, maybe a, yeah, a little well, it's while. It's been out for over a week, man. Uh, has it really been that long? I've been asleep you know, a lot of the time. Anyway. You know, weeks now yeah fair enough then so my initial response to this was it feels so much nicer than 3.02 like i really hated how 3.02 felt like as a general rule like the way that ledges felt the way that like movement and wave dashing felt as a whole was just unnatural and i didn't like the way it felt however they have geared it to feel a lot more like um melee which being uh the elitist that i am i really like that but um yeah yeah, it yeah. feels good to me. I've got to agree with you there. I feel that um, it does, it does just the control. The control within the game just feels a lot smoother. I mean, aside from aside from the you know the way it's falling slightly close to melee because a lot of the the inverted commas jank is getting um, is getting you know phased out a bit. Recoveries are getting weaker. Um, edge guarding is becoming stronger. Just you know, the, 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 it's becoming more. To, to just um, the mechanics coming are getting. It's getting close to, to the meta game is getting close to melee. Mm. Um, but also just yeah, in terms of how it feels, it does feel a lot smoother. They've done a really good job, and I'm really pleased with them as, with it as well. Um, I'm just 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 before I get off topic, I'm I'm interested in some of the. Um, in some of the um, choices with regard to rebalancing the cast, it's interesting. After after um, I can some agree people... with that. I can agree with that because we have characters who kind of I don't want to say needed the jank, but did require it for some sort of form of neutral or meta has been has had that taken away, and then there are characters like Wolf who got buffed and he didn't really need buffed. <laughs> Like at all. If I, if I can say though, um, a lot of people use the word jank for PM. Uh, to me, I don't know if I'm the only one, it just seems a bit like a John to me uh, from players <laughs> that aren't used to PM. That if something hits them and they think it shouldn't for some reason, they'll say, oh, that's janky. Yeah, I, I have to agree with Ben here. Um, I think it's just a lock, lack of uh, experience with the game. And I can't, I can't blame anyone for it because you know, it's still very new for all of us. Um, except maybe you know the, the Project M back rumors, but you know it, it's it's still it's, it's almost like a new game really, and it's it's there to be relearned. So just because yeah. something is a, is a bit strange at the moment, 
yeah, I don't you think expect it to play a certain way. It is its own game, and yeah. that's how it should be. It's it's almost like going back into melee. If you know Marth or Sheik were to jab Fox out of their illusion, people used to call that jank. But it happens every single time, and I don't really think it's a it's a problem. And you know, then you get the interaction where uh, Fox will side B and Marth or Sheik will jab, and Fox will still go through it because of his inv- invincibilities. And back then, people didn't know know how it worked. Now we have all the frame data; we have, we understand it all. Nobody calls it jank anymore. They just say it's, you know it's just mistimed, or you know he got maybe almost a bit lucky sometimes. But it's never jank, really. Mm. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah. I understand. I think I think it depends how you're defining the term. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I mean, just in terms of some of these characters, like a lot, as I as I said before, I feel I feel Ness has got Ness has um been severely nerfed, and though I think it, it, I do not did not agree with the um with the, I think the biggest. I think it's very good that the um that the side B doesn't activate on shield anymore. Yeah, but I'm quite glad as well. But it it doesn't it it just feels like the character doesn't have that many options now in the neutral or I, you know. I, I think Ness has to be played significantly differently now. Um, I think Ness I think Ness's down air has kind of like you know going going back to like how some characters have been improved by proxy ness's down air has improved quite a lot because of the the less you know the the weaker recoveries the the yeah. the other grabs and just in general really so I, I think ness just needs to be played a lot differently and people haven't really worked that out because not many people played ness before either so it's kind of a, a really a, bit, a big change almost so i think it's- people just don't really know how to you know, I'd argue, sort of I'd style. argue the idea of uh, Ness having any, not having any neutral options because he still, I think, like I think double jump cancels for that character still do really, and I think that's the same for a lot of characters. Like because this quote unquote jank was there, like their actual options sort of got overlooked a little bit by that because it was like, oh, this was just so much more of a better option. Like I know this is like almost completely unrelated, but I was I was watching an Ego Raptor video the other day about. Um, and it was sequelitis about Castlevania, Super Castlevania 4 where it was oh, like, yeah, yeah. all these options but because there's one really really good option you sort of just use that and everything else just becomes sort of like just it's it's just sort of there it's not really used it's just there for like yeah. the fact that it's there and I think that's the sort of same with PM with like 3.02 the way that a lot of characters had this thing that made them like elevated them in terms of how good they are that like all their other options were just sort of like overlooked like I still think Double Jump Cancel Fair is a really really great approach with um Ness and with a lot of other characters with double jump cancels or with just who do have legitimate neutral game options but nobody's like looked into them further than oh I can side B and they'll activate it on shield and then I can get in and go for get a jab get a I, um, well one yeah. of the things that um, our teammate Dave who is um, a Ness main yeah, TNT. Second, second best Ness in the UK <laughs> um, <laughs> wow. second, that's pretty high isn't it yeah yes. well anyway he he's um He's been saying to me actually that Ness is more about the double jump cancels, as you say now, get, you know, getting the low aerials mm. because he no longer has that PK fire, um, and yeah, that's what he's really been focusing on. And he's, he's, you know, he's working hard on trying to improve Ness, but I think even still, like it just, I think PK fire could have had something so that it's not completely useless anymore. But it's, you know, it doesn't mean that you forget about the, the double jump cancel stuff. Mm. It's hard, to, think- it's hard to have a middle ground with that move because of how it works. Yeah. But I'd like to say as well, um, uh, back to what you said, Scroll. I don't think PM... I think some characters were like that, but on the whole, I don't think PM was a, a one-trick pony. I think, no, no. yes, characters did have really good things in them, but in melee, it was exactly the same thing. But because it's melee, it's fine. Uh, so, like, you know, Fox relies on shines and back airs so much. But because everyone's used to that, that's fine. What I'm worried about with PM is that it's, as soon as somebody notices something good with a character, as soon as someone starts to do well, like Emu Killer, like Neon, um, everyone starts to panic and everyone thinks, oh, we've got to make this character worse, we've got to make this character worse. But with the melee characters, it's all right because they, you know... P- basically, yeah. you, you can't update melee... No, properly, if not for tournament play anyway, so no. people have to work around it. And over the years, people do figure out things. Mm. 
Yeah, I think I I, I I do agree with that because one thing one diff one thing about a game like Melee where not where Nintendo's not going to do squat to change it, right? Um, it does force adaptation. Yeah. I mean, if anyone's seen a shirt by Broken Tear, shout outs to Broken Tear. Yes, Tier. Broken Tear shirts the best. Um, there, there's, there's a shirt which I think it has Nerf buff, pa- Nerf buff patch. I, da- I, I, have, really... I own that shirt. It's Do so you actually? Good. Yeah, yeah but it, it, it makes sense. Cross them all out, just to the bottom. Adapt. That's what you do, yeah. and it's entirely right. Like the thing, obviously, about, about the PMDT is the game is constantly changing, and with most fighting games nowadays, the game is constantly being patched and being changed. So people do, people do. You know, it, it, you have to adapt quicker. But it's about it's people. I think get stuck in the rut of like you know complaining rather than actually saying please yeah, nerf this character exactly. please yeah. buff this character rather than say rather than just learning to adapt yeah look some the characters are always going to be better than others right so yeah, yeah. i remember I mean, when in melee um puff was becoming much more popular so it was mango and hungry box and puff was going up in the tier list and everyone was saying oh Puff's broken now. Puff's so good. Uh, oh, yeah, Puff, this matchup's the really broken for Puff. And I just think if that was PM, if that wasn't melee, it was PM. That would have been changed, and that would a new version would have come out, and Puff would have been terrible. Forever top, they would have just taken top. away all of those things. Whereas actually now, Puff isn't like ruling the roost anymore because yeah. people yeah. can play that much better against with the matchup. Mm. Yeah. I mean, one thing I do like about all these changes about Project M is that it's almost like it feels like each one's a new season. It's kind of like very similar to to card games or to Formula One, where, you know, every season something changes and everyone has to adapt to it. And I think it's good for adding variety. But at the same time, it doesn't really help, you know, people learn how to be adaptable. And I think like a lot of players are missing that sort of adaptability. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually a really good way to look at it as well. Yeah, I mean, it, it might it might be better if it was changed every two years, but then you know people might lose interest in it. So yeah, maybe, if, it's, maybe, if it's if it's the same, I think the reason that melee has remained like the way it has in popularity for so long is because people have, I guess, gotten used to it and like really found their re- their true like their love for the game, the way the way they feel when they play the game as compared to like whether they play like sixty four or brawl or PM or or four, you know. Yeah. Um, well, well, just towards, well, just uh, closing out this um, little thing on three point five, your characters in three point oh two, and whether you'll continue to play them. This is one I've really been interesting to ask you, you guys, uh, uh, Ben and Ant, because uh, Ben, I know you played Meta Knight, Ant, you played um, Ivy Saw, and what was the other one? Sorry, Pits. 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 Yeah. There you go. Uh, and oh, those wow. characters can, yeah, all three of those characters. Um, took some serious serious hits in terms of nerfs I'm just interested to see where you what you think of your characters now and whether you'll be changing or sticking with them go for it go on Ben off you okay um, it's fine um, I'm not I'm not raging I'm not angry I'm not you know saying oh I'm not I'm, I'm not switching uh, Meta Knight is fine yes he is different but is there can it be played around most definitely um, it will take some getting used to though unfortunately uh, just the recovery um, I'm, when I first started playing Meta Knight, because his recovery is much um, harder than it looks in a way, yeah, falls quite quickly. So it took me a while to recover properly with Meta Knight without a steam, and now it's like I'm back at that stage because it's so different. Yeah, uh, Meta Knight, I mean, lo- he's lost a jump, hasn't he? Yeah, because I mean, Anne, I'm not, I'm, I'm promise you, I'm not Johnning, but you re- last time we met up. Um, I was my recovery yeah, we, of the place. It, it, it was back to uh, Ben learning Meta Knight again. Yeah, because, so it's it's difficult. I mean, the down there, um, it's, so instead of riding his sword, he's got his brawl one. Mm. Um, I really, really loved the old down there. So it's a bit sad to see it go, but I think the new down there is still good, but just in a different way. So summarize, it's fine. I'll just play differently. Uh, I think that's how three point five work. It's a good edge guard, isn't it? The new down there, isn't that right? Uh, you, yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. You can use it for an edge guard, uh, whereas before you couldn't really. I mean, he you drop too far off. So Meta Knight is a good edge guarder, but you, he's very very limited. Uh, but you can yeah. use it down here. I think how Meta Knight has changed 
in general in this version is that his on stage game is a lot weaker and his recovery game is weaker but what he gets gets you know balanced with is um his edge guards have become potentially stronger down air is such a good edge guard utility oh yeah yeah whereas before the, the down air could be used for on stage combo as well as getting back on stage if you've been sent such up a, i love that move such a brilliant move yeah and uh, <laughs> i mean so, everyone knows everyone that's played me knows that Meta so, Knight's basically just become a little bit more polarized. He's more of an, you know, one of the strongest edge guard characters. Um, but his on stage game, he has to work a bit harder to, to get to that um, that edge guard conversion. Cool. Uh, fair enough. Then. It's a very cruel version in a way. This three point five. It's like anything anything that you liked that you thought was good, you can't have it anymore. It's almost like segueing uh, on from that actually adds what happened to Ivysaur and Pit, mate. Like oh, uh, Ivysaur. Why? I don't. I don't get Ivysaur. Well, he, he's had his um, charges, like, he requires more charges to get Solar Beam. I think what's really hit Ivysaur the hardest is actually the ledge changes, you know, um, and the tether changes. Oh, yeah. So, so he can't, you know, snap onto it as many times. He can't, you can't do the fake-out tether. Um, and then when you actually do tether and you're forced on stage, you get hit so hard because of, like, how little movement you have and how, how much longer it takes that everyone can reliably edge guard. Uh, Ivysaur's very slow now. Yeah, I mean, Ivy Store again, it's like, he's still like a huge edge guard with the back air. And, um, you know, the the Razor Leaf isn't as strong anymore because you can't smash smash it. So it, it goes a lot slower. It has it generally has a lot less presence. Um, but, you know, Ivy Store was considered a bit too good before anyway. Even like in uh, 2.5, when his back air was ridiculous, it was like a three frame start off. Oh, the back air is. What a ridiculous edge card that was! And it was almost like all of it was a sweet spot as well. So it wasn't like chic, where you know you got to get the sweet spot. Well, I, I actually think thinking like two point five, it was quite weak. But when it when we came to three point zero and three point zero two, the back air, although slower, was a lot stronger. And I thought that was actually a big improvement. But obviously, they thought it was still too much. So um, they've had to nerf, um, you know, other other stage games to make that um, that edge guard opportunity a bit less frequent really the d- the down air is not as good as well as in as a recovery option that's one yeah. I noticed when I was playing with it yeah but he has got a new up throw which means that um, you get an extra charge now when you uh, when you up throw which is pretty cool yeah so but, you can you can you can pummel an up throw for quite a lot of charges probably yeah you can yeah but then again you, you need more charge you need 22 now instead of like the previous 18 so yeah oh yeah, but um, you know, I, I don't really, really mind too much. I, I think I was moving more towards Pit anyway back in 3.02. Um, but Pit has had a huge nerf, and I don't just mean the, the extra costume that he's got, which is horrible. Oh God, BDI Pit, crab-eyed Pit. <laughs> oh, man, that is awful. What were they thinking? Not good. It's well, not no, good. bro, res- respect the old school. That's the original Pit. Yeah, the re- original <laughs> Pit. But we like have more crack pixels addict. now. <laughs> we actually have the graphic capability. Yeah, we have the technology. Okay. okay. Yeah, I was going to say we have the technology. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah. Sorry, go on. I, I was going to say I'm. I'm not saying I like it. <laughs> it's certainly not my favorite skin. We ought to get. Um, yeah. We ought to get Silent Doom to do a Pixel Mario, maybe. That oh, that, awesome. that, that, I would actually like that. That'd be <laughs> no, cool. come on. But yeah, Pit, Pit's like he's had a lot of his utility just knocks the crap out of him. Um, like his down tilt is just hella slow now. You can't do anything with it. You, I used to use down tilt like after you know forward. Like I'll have you know, I have you know though, Fishy Corn, that down tilt was evil. It was ridiculous. Like the amount of stun on it and, and how quick it was. You could use it to like almost interrupt you, a shield you'd grab. Shield and, it. You'd be shielding it, and then Pit will be like, okay, down tilt. Okay, another down tilt because the shield stun was so big. And you could interrupt the down tilt as well. Yeah. Yeah, just down tilt, down tilt, down tilt. It was horrible, yes. horrible move. But now it's like the startup's not it's not even good anymore, so it's it's virtually useless. Um, which is a shame because it used to have like, you know, a good utility. Even if it didn't have so much stun, I think that would have been like the correct sort of balancing for him. And a lot of his timing's changed as well, and then his up B is completely well, it's not completely different, but it's more like math now in terms of how much um horizontal motion he gets now is it's virtually nothing. So you can't really combo into up B anymore. And then his grounded arrows have um, had the lag increased on it, so you can't spam it as much. I mean, the air ones are still pretty quick, but presumably what the what the development team wanted was that Pitt has to be very accurate with his uh, arrows 
to edge guard and it's just it's just very difficult now but maybe i just need to get used to the timing a bit more um and just learn pit again mm. fair enough yeah. yeah i mean you 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 you're going to have it's it's not as easy to edge guard now is it so you've got because the arrow because of the arrow nerf so but at the same time, recoveries are weaker as well, so maybe it yeah. does balance out. So, as I say, it's, it's just something that we have to get used to, and um, we'll, we'll see with time how how well how good he actually is. We're fi- we're basically fine, I think, as a whole, as a region, uh, well, as our crew, we're fine with three point five. It's just getting used to it a bit more. Mm. Yeah, I, th- I think I, right. many of us weren't that happy with it at first, but that's just you know the average knee jerk reaction. We're we're now starting to get used to it. We're start we're learning a lot more every day. So it's just a matter of time, really. And yeah, speaking, sure thing. Speaking of your crew, actually, let's talk a little bit about your sponsorship from 8-Bit Planet. Because that's, okay. you know, do you want to talk about how that, that came about? Because um, I'm going to be honest, right? I haven't actually heard what's been going on in the Manchester scene for a while now. But when I saw you guys sponsored by 8-Bit Planet, didn't I? I was like, oh, that was kind of sudden. But I assume it wasn't. So do you want guys no, to talk about that? Well, basically, um, 8-Bit Planet came up to Play Expo. Um, to do the, the show there, but as well as run, running Smash, and um, given like my past like tournament running experience and history, um, I, I spoke with Tom, um, who runs Eight Bit Planet, and you know we we worked out what we were doing for the tournaments, um, and then we started get, getting discussing about you know our stream and and um, you know what we do for the Northwest scene here. So you know, we kind of got to the idea that you know we could actually represent him because he's seen us at other tournaments as well, like Cabin Fever Two, which is way back now. Uh, oh, yeah. As well, yeah, and he was you know he was really impressed with like you know how we projected ourselves as a team. You know, we had all, all our team shirts, and um, you know we were there supporting each other and uh, giving each other advice in between games. So it wasn't just like you know everyone for themselves. It was a you know a proper team effort, and uh, I think that's what you know Tom really loved about us. Plus, we had the stream. I think. Um, we could represent him very well, so we started talking about it, and um, in the end, we've we've come up with this uh, with this you know this partnership really. Oh well, good on you, man. Yeah, so you know, yeah, we, we're working really hard um, with Eight Bit Planet, you know, to try and promote them, and uh, you know, a lot of the stuff that they sell is also kind of in line with the whole rare candy image, you know, like you know Pokemon and yeah. you know, general, you know, fun stuff, and um, you know, Tom sells like a. You know, a load of like Pokemon merchandise on his website. Um, Those shirts are cool, man. Oh man, the, uh, the, the Gengar Gen- one I love. Yeah, the Gengar really ones, the like Snorlax them. ones. You know, really big. I'm really, li- I'm really liking the Team Rocket one. I'm gonna have to cop one of those. It looks sick. Yeah, you definitely. Uh, and uh, you know, we we actually do a promotion with um with uh with Eight Bit Planet on our uh, stream as well. So if you you know check out our stream, you can get a discount code. So uh, you know, we're we're trying to just make it accessible for everyone, really. And also, it's um. It's really, it's really cool to be um, uh, sponsored, actually, as well. Well, obviously, because uh, you know, not m- many people in the UK are, and um, the people that are are generally, you know, we got Charles and Prof, uh, you know, the cream of the crop. <laughs> me, me, uh, no, 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 <laughs> and, and of course, Scroll. He's um, <laughs> shout out to UA, shout out to UA, shout out to UA. But so you know, I mean, it's we're all fairly decent players, but we're not, you know, we're not like world beaters, more like best in the UK. Yeah. Or but so yeah, it's still cool guys. To, I think it's the fact, as Ant said, how we work as a crew is quite good. I think we're quite solid. Yeah, yeah. very well, very well deserved. Very well deserved, guys. Yeah, and I say um, as well, I'm beaten in PM Cruise. Oh yeah, we are actually beaten in PM actually, Cruise. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put that in there. Actually, I remember, I remember way back now at the MMR three um, when we sent a Newcastle crew over there, and we yeah. got decimated by you guys but in all fairness that was like post NEC 3 I think so we were still pretty trashed here at that point still However, yeah. I think now as a, as a region we've grown a lot more we've got a lot more players now unfortunately o- Okamid is in Japan now so we're not seeing him for a while Yeah. Um, and of course NKD who considers himself northeast is What's also in there? he's in Sweden I think Whilst we're talking about the Northeast, I also want to um, shout outs to DCJ because I noticed oh, um, right. he went to a tournament in Scotland recently. Oh, uh, yeah, he went to. And, um, oh, um, Smash Around the Wall. Wall. Smash Around the Wall, too. Beyond the Wall, yeah. And um, and he was also at Smash or DI. And I could just have to say, that guy puts in the effort. That DCJ, guy's fan- if, I'm going to be right, honest, right? If we didn't have DCJ in the Northeast, nothing would get done. 
Like, no one would travel anywhere, no one would have any, like, motivation to do anything. Like, DCJ was the person who, like, basically found G4G, which is our, like, venue for us, because he was, like, looking around places and was like, okay, there's a card game shop that has fighting game weeklies, let's go down there, bring some Wii's, play some PM, and, like, this was, like, way back in, like, February, because the, the northeast scene, I'm putting that in quotation marks, because it, it's kind of existed, but we never really did anything, we never really travelled anywhere, we were never really present, I was present on, like, Smash UK from 2012, on Smashboards, on the, like, near-dead Smash UK thread on Smashboards now, but I was sort of there, and people sort of were kind of aware of me as a stream monster and as, like, a sort of person who's kind of on this page. But, um, you know, our scene has grown exponentially in the past year, and I'm very happy with the way our scene has grown. And DCJ puts in so much work to make that happen. Like, he travels to events to make sure, he, like, you know, Newcastle exists, we have a scene, like, KOTN, he TOs, he does everything. He puts in hella work for our scene. So shout out to Dale when you listen to this yeah. back before you, like, criticise me on something. No, no, that's good. Well. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, massive shout out to DCJ. Yeah. And speaking of which, um, we'll move on to the coin leaderboards now because we've got the melee and... We, well, we'll just, we'll just talk because in the... For those of you outside of the UK listening to this podcast, we have a coin leaderboard which is where you go to a tournament with, with uh, more than 16 entrants um and you place well you will get coins for it and this will put uh, attribute to your leaderboards placing and you will go up or down depending on how well you do and um in melee the top the top three obviously they're smash rating points basically essentially yeah it's a rating system and of course prof and fuzzy at the top of each but um one thing i like looking at it's um the melee one because you know I remember looking at the Heir to the Heir to the Throne um, promo video and seeing like I, I I was honestly like oh I wasn't aware we had a third person who was like like competing for like best in the UK along with Prof and Fuzzy until I like saw that and saw VA, but um, to to now know how good VA is and to look at this table now and to see the Jolteon and Jelly are above VA, it, it just sort of shows you know like having this sort of mindset of the three kings or the three gods or five gods or however you want to say it, it's easily broken. Like, there will well, always be people like, re- re- like, I know for a while it's been Prof, Fuzzy, and VA. It's, there's not a big, as big of a gap as there has been in the past, which is good, a good thing, because mm-hmm. before it used to be, okay, the top three, uh, Fuzzy, Prof, VA, easily, and no one would, be, no one would touch them. No mm-hmm. one would, it's yeah. just not, no contest. But now, they still are, they still are the top three, no doubt. Um, it's more interesting because uh, the players like uh, Jolteon, like Jelly, like uh, X1 are getting a lot better and uh, starting to knock on the door, which is good because that's what you need. You don't you don't want people to roll to just run people over. Oh yeah, and just dominate. It's good. It's, it helps the scene. It's we don't want to see the same people winning all the time. No, absolutely. I mean, in VA's defence, I just want to point out here the um, Jolteon and Jelly have been to more tournaments than he has yeah VA yeah. VA you could probably get higher yeah. I'm pretty sure that VA would be like you know third or second if um, given enough tournaments the, pro- the problem with the, the leaderboards is that it doesn't kind of account for how many like tournaments you've been to so you could kind of like farm like you know 10 tournaments and if, oh, yeah. if, and if someone's only been to one even if it's just fuzzy it doesn't matter how good you are you're not going to get 10 tournaments worth of coins you know compared to you know if you're like prof level where you're you know, you can win every other tournament besides Fuzzy. Mm. It, 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 that, that's the one flaw of the the whole coin system, I feel. But at the same time, you can't really easily get around that either because but, if you don't go to tournaments, you don't deserve to be up there. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's in, in any rating system, I mean, this is true of any competitive competitive sport, competitive game, anything. It in, you have to participate to get up there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's, it encourages them. I mean, you, you want people to come to tournaments and participate and play. And I think it's, I think that's worked to quite an extent, actually, because um, I haven't seen, it's been a long, t- well, because I'm quite old school. It's been a long time since I've seen people travel the way they are now. Um, for the fact that if we have a tournament in the Northeast, for example, like King of the North, mm. it's not just, that isn't just the Northeast players. And you know maybe the odd other. Um, it's people do decide. Right, I'm gonna you know I'm gonna get a coach. I'm gonna go to this tournament. Yeah, man. Like, I we, think like when we saw Ho for You arrive, that was a big shock. And Ho for You's um, a great guy as well. One of oh, our favorite, yeah. 
Love her for you. Love him. Absolute bloke. Uh, shout out to her for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, really good to see uh, Jin and R23 on the melee leaderboards. Yeah. Jin, yeah, definitely. Jin to win every single time, man. <laughs> he's, he's, he's a big up and comer. Shout out to him. Mm. Um, yeah, and, uh, that, Jin puts in a lot of work. I see him streaming all the time and uh, yeah. he's, he's, he's always he's going to his. Good. He's going to all you know the regional ones as well, so he definitely puts in the work. Yeah, I respect that. It's really good. Um, R twenty three as well. You know, he's been he's been up. He's been on the rise for a while. I mean, I think he's been he kind of is where I don't wanna, is where I don't want to say the wrong thing, but I think he he works. He has to work much much harder for melee because uh, I think PM he's more suited to. He's better at PM naturally. Uh, I, melee, I think I could agree with that. I think well, I could agree with that to some extent. Think he's got quite a solid grasp. I don't mean if if Alex is watching this, don't get me wrong, but I don't think he's uh, quite as as much of a natural in melee. So he really has to uh, to grind. He doesn't get but, any easy wins. At the same time, he's very new to both games, and melee has such a steep learning curve, um, yes. especially when you get to that sort of level. Like it just you have to put in like almost twice as much effort just to make like a ten percent improvement. It's like it's so difficult at that sort of level that it, it might be that way for a long time until he really, really deeply understands the game. Whereas oh, uh, yeah. Tem, everyone's still learning, so it's much easier to get on a level with other people in that game. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, when you have a meta game as developed as melee is, then it's going to take a lot longer to get to get in to get I where can, the other players I are. Can, I can agree with that because, like, I, what, from personal experience as well, again, oh. Northeast, we were primarily Project M reason for a long time because people were like more willing to get into that game because it was. I don't want to say the learning curve was like less steep than melee, but I think like at that point it was definitely at the point where me- where melee was like the meta game was all the way up, and it was hard to get into, and we had very low entrance in melee for the longest time until recently when we started having like sixteen plus people entering, which is great, but because I love melee, but um, yeah, very very difficult, very very difficult, and especially for new players who are like, you know, they may not have the time or the energy to travel a long distance or not even a long distance, just a, a small amount of distance to play with other people. So it's like, you know, training alone can get very, very dull and very boring, very, very fast. Especially yeah. if you don't have the really, the real like, motivation of someone else there. Especially melee. Yeah. Uh, no oh, melee. melee. I mean, I can, I can play melee, uh, well-ish, you know, I'm not, I'm not amazing. I'm really not, but, um, I can't stand practicing on my own anymore. Just like tech skill and stuff like that. It's just so boring. It's thirty seconds, and I'm 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 bored out of my mind. Mm. Uh, if I've got someone to play against, yeah, brilliant. But I can't. Yeah, which is which is why it's so important that these local scenes are coming up everywhere, and that people put the time into, um, <coughs> you know, help help grow their community because that's how everyone's going to level up in the UK. Is that if our scenes proper, right? Yeah, yes. and I think that's what's happening. Yeah, it's, it's certainly what we're doing in uh, in Manchester, and it sounds like you know that's what you guys are doing in the northeast and you know in Scotland and even even down uh, down south. You guys are starting to like you know get some of the newer players into a uh, project term and stuff. Yeah, I think the interest was there from like, so I know that there were a lot of casual play- players who have sort of like turned up uh, or like all I know for a fact Greengrocer, who's one of, who's a very strong player in melee, um, was actually just. He just sort of happened to come to an event um, with TFU, who is arguably our strongest player uh, in melee. And you know, yeah. he brought Green Grocer and he brought Gorbo and he brought his. Ha- and they were they were all his like friends from back in the day, and they all just sort of came like, "Oh yeah, we like me- we like Smash." And they're like, "Okay, I like this game a lot. Let's get into this competitively." And that is good. Like if you just bring like I remember as well another one, uh, Sui, uh, the Marth player from the northeast. I talk about a bit. Uh, we didn't really know who he was until Chav. Uh, brought him along, and it was like, okay, this dude looks a lot like Mango. Maybe he's good. And it Can was... I just um, <laughs> suggest, by the way, that guy changes his name? Maybe changes his tag. Who? Uh, the, isn't it to the drunken Chav? Oh, um, Chav. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's Sam. As much as I love Sam, his name is a bit questionable. But uh, hey, if he's all right with it, but yeah, he, he just just go by Chav. All right. Um, That'll do. I've also just noticed on the the PM uh, top ten, which I'm no offense, a bit more interested in because I'm more. No, of a PM that is no bother. No bother. Everyone's got uh, their opinion. It's very very good to see who's in third. Oh yeah, R two three in third above, 
Like, and I have to say, R23, a lot of people, um, a lot of people complain about Kirby. A lot of people say, oh, dash tags, dash tag, blah, blah, blah. Um, and, you know, yeah, Kirby does have some things that are annoying. But when you play a character and you want to play that character well, you need to exploit the, the best moves. And that's what he does. And he's, I saw him at Smash or DI, and you did as well, Lawrence. And he was playing so well. He was yeah, just was. such a good performance. Yeah. I think he got a fifth. He played really well in that tournament. Yeah, yeah. That and was, I just that... think um, it's good to see it's good to see that payoff. I think I'm, I'm amazed he's um, third though. I'm um, even well, might be guilty on. Don't forget, he has been to like four tournaments though. Whereas you know the majority of other players in that sort of uh, region have only been to like you know one or two. Yeah. Again, or, he's really... um, he's 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 putting the effort in for the community though, which is yeah. fantastic. Yeah, right? he's he, he, he's, yeah, he's he running does it essentially, isn't he? Does yeah. a lot of um, hosting as well, hosting and co-hosting, and he's he's very very active. Yes, yeah, big shout to him. I mean, we had him on the show during um, for the th- for the three point five changes, and he said he's you know he's still he's still happy with Kirby. I mean, Kirby's lost some of the mm. some of the ridiculous things, but every character's lost some of the ridiculous. Well, almost every character's lost some ridiculous things. So oh, from a certain bunch, a certain privileged bunch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. It makes me very happy to play PM now. <laughs> it's very nice. It's very nice playing PM now. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, also yeah, um, one person I want to draw attention to because I just love their play uh, is Anarchy. Like oh, I know, no. right? I Not know that. a lot of people don't don't like campy gameplay, but as an ex Puff main and as an Icy's main in a majority of the games, I really love watching Anarchy play. I don't have a specific reason for it. But, like, there was just something beautiful to me when I saw at MMR3 him versus TFU double four stocking him. Like, there was something beautiful <laughs> about that to me. I, I, love, I love TFU, I love Dan, but, like, watching Anarchy just body him, like, just destroying him fundamentally was just. There was something beautiful to it. And I just. And ever since then, I've just been like, okay, Anarchy, I like him. I like this guy. And he's yeah. very, very solid. He is very solid. He's too solid. Like he's played Brawl for so long, and he's one of the few people that prefers Brawl to like any other game. And he puts in so much work for that, even when the game you know was dying. And he's always been uh, you know, you know, Link or Toon Link or whatever. And he's he just learns that character in and out. He doesn't switch to another one if the matchup's hard. He just sticks with Link. And he's I think he's a true soldier. I think he's a master player in that thing. Isn't he a master I player think about it is in brawl. Yeah, he was a master player. Yeah, but he, con- he used to play with like you know with Toon Link and Link, and then he moved back to Link when um when when he started playing Project M, uh, yeah. because like Link Link's like his favorite his favorite games character anyway. So he he just yeah, plays nice. what he loves. It just happens that you know, Link was good as well, but he still puts in the work, and he would have played Link mm. regardless of that know. character loyalty though. It's it's very. I think yeah, um, very one of the interesting things though I I like about Anarchy is that he's a brawl player. And lots, there's still this whole sort of divide between melee and brawl, because a lot of people think, oh, if they're a brawl player, they can't play PM, or they assume they wouldn't be. That's able to a play very it. interesting aspect because I think that, like in 3.02, I always had the I always had the mindset that the brawl players did better in 3.02 because, like, I think it was still like the ledge mechanics were still a bit iffy and recoveries were still a bit iffy, but like. I think a lot of brawl play players like adapted quite well to PM, and I think that because like they had this drive, like okay, my game has been changed, so I'm gonna have to change alongside that. I think brawl players brought an entirely new perspective to PM because usually, um, take Zero Suit Samus. We've got um, Schlurps in our crew, who's very very strong Zero Suit Samus player. I don't know if any of you've seen him. Yeah, uh, I've, I've seen, I saw him play it there. Very very uh, good. Before that, most people coming from melee picked up PM, picked up Zero Suit Samus, and thought straight away, right, Falcon. This yeah. character is Falcon. And just ran ran up to people and approached all the time and went for combos. Hmm. If you've ever seen Slurps play, that's how you should play Zero Suit Samus. And it's not it's not campy or anything like that. It's just different and it's smarter. And I think well, she's that's got what, so many zoning options, right? I think yeah, brawl well, players get a bit of a tough time, whereas you know they they know what they're doing. They're really skillful. Yeah, mm, one thing that put- I notice, one thing that I notice about a lot of brawl players is that their fundamentals are so much more solid than their than neutral. The neutral of a brawl player is terrifying because if you like rush at them, they're gonna be like, "No, I've got an option to keep you out." Like just kick you in the face, and it's like, 
yeah. Where, I can't get in. I can't do everything I need to do. They, it's like, no, you're not doing that. But another thing that, like, you know, it's kind of like two, two, um, two sides of the coin. You know, Brawl, Brawl Player's neutral game is really strong, but they can't deal with things like shield pressure mm. or, no. or yeah. you know, fa- fast-paced movements. It's just basically what you've taken from your, your own game. Because Brawl is, is so, like, neutral-based and the combos are, are minimal, it's, you know, it's, it's very, very... Uh, very, it's, it's, it's less fast paced, but it's more thought out, and very, very like almost like pos- position um, technique. It's very you know spacing based. Foot's uh, game, yeah. Yeah, exactly. That you that's what the brawl players focus on. Whereas when melee players when they play when they pick up Project M, if they get a combo starter, you can be sure as hell that they will combo it to death. Oh yeah. So, yeah, so that, if, that's if they're very, a good one player. Yeah. Yeah, if you play both games like someone like Wills does, you end up being pretty good at Project M because you've got, you know, the neutral game and you've got the combo game. Mm, and I, mm. I think that's why Wills is actually quite good at Project M because he's got the best of both worlds. He plays both games. And down B. And down B. <laughs> and down, um, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I do want to add yeah, I like I like to watch Brawl players play because they play the game very differently. Mm. It's, very diff- it's very different watching a melee player play... PM. If you if you want to look at PM as the game that both players play the most of, um, it's interesting watching a melee player being, playing PM and a brawl player playing PM. Yeah. I mean yeah. the brawl players and you like there are a lot of really good ones. There's there's Schlerps, as you've said. There's Wills. There's Kong. There's Ho for you. There's all these re- and Anarchy of course. I, because really- I remember when Kong first started picking up Diddy, um, everyone was then really annoyed about the bananas because before then no one could properly use them because brawl players they know how to use items very very well and they yeah, know how to items. they know how to the banana game works and yeah, it's not that... it's not something that's simple it's something that's very technical and you have to learn and uh, Kong brought that to the table and uh, yeah no he's he's really, really good, good. I, um, I always used yeah. to say look I always used to say like when well, well I, I learned after playing him enough that you just you don't because I, I would try throwing the back at him and be like, nah, I can't. Nah, he'd always catch it. <laughs> I I was just like, I, I just I just learned look, never throw a banana at Kong. <laughs> he, will, <laughs> he will always make it worse for you if you if you if you if you well if you give him a banana, it's never a yeah, good that's thing. That's a great little catchphrase for Kong. That never throw a banana at I mean, Kong. N- no yeah. disrespect to Kong because I'm he he is a great player, but at the same time, I think a lot of people are giving him not too much credit but like people are, just don't adapt to the bananas quick enough because it's, it's, it's quite difficult to, to react to that in a best of three or a best of five it's almost impossible to, to learn how to avoid the banana game completely but once people start working out how to um, deal with bananas and in a way we've, we've already had that help with the change to 3.5 um, I'm not saying Kong will do worse but people will start you know, standing a better chance against Kong mm. until Kong, you know, he's, gets, um, gets gets practice again. He's given up three point five. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's given up PM. He's moving straight on to Smash Four. Oh, I is think. he? Yeah, uh, he's not the first. He's not the lots, first one. I mean, all are taking the are taking the high road up to. Smash yeah, 4. I mean, it's a game Passing play, it's alongside a game, at PM. It's, it's a game close to them. I, I I consider Smash Four to be almost like Brawl two point oh. Really, a lot so of people it, do. It, yeah, it's basically like the you know the upgraded version of the game where it's got you know it's, it's it's different enough to to warrant you know relearning, but at the same time like it's very very different in terms of mechanics as well. And no chain grabs, so I can't play it. Like, <laughs> love me some chain grabs. Ah, uh, chain grabs. I yes, I hate ice not. climbers. No offense, S- um, scroll, but that's fine, man. The amount of times I hear uh, that phrase, I had like... to play. Um, cause I had to play uh, Shufu uh, Smash Ain't Dead, and oh. I did. I did. Oh. That. Oh my! Shifu is really good, though. Shout out to he's him. He's good. Yeah, he's a. I like. He's a really good player. He's, he's really, really good. good. I had to play Apology as well. I had, in my in my second round of pool, I had three Ice Climbers players. Who did you have? Yeah, I, I had um, Shufu, Alpha Dash, AD, and AD? Apology. Well, Alpha Dash at the time. <laughs> yeah, AD. Um, and um, I just thought that's not fair. Someone fixed mm. that. <laughs> one thing you can, one thing you can try. One thing I think that's a good way of determining how good an ice climber, how good a ice pl- climber player knows their character is how good they are with Sopo. 
I mean, uh, my myself is godlike. I don't know what you're talking about. My myself is amazing. <laughs> because if they can still scare you when they're when they're rocking the sopo, then you know you know they you know they understand their character a bit. Certainly. Wave dash, wave dash, wave dash, down smash. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Hey man, well, am I pretty accurate? Scroll. I think that's. I mean, when your only the movement option procedure. is really. When your only movement option is really the wave dash, then you know you may as well use it. And if you've got the yeah. second best in the game, then I'm, hey. I'm only kidding, I'm only kidding. But um, yeah, but you, he's, you, he's very, he's he's improved, he's improving so much. He's really good. Mm, oh yeah, absolutely. He puts the work what in. You, what were we talking about before this? We, 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 oh, it's all right. Basically, we were talking about the leaderboard. I mean, it 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 it, it accounts the same thing. Look, who basically who who do who do we who do we who are we looking at here who is you know we've got obviously we've got prof at the top of both because one one he's arguably you know he and fuzzy are always duking out in melee for who's the best mm. and in in pm he's dominant as hell yeah um but also he's put the work in you can see he's attended so many tournaments he really like he does oh, put the, yeah. you can't yeah. It's easy to forget that I, I, he's diligent I he's prof and and we all think well you know of course he's going to be on top but, but yeah, he, he puts does, the work in, and that's he why does, yeah. he's got a big lead. If we look at the actual po- um, coin tallies, he's big got in Malay, a bigger lead than I thought in Malay. Um He's got a hundred. He's got a hundred coin lead, which is a big lead. But don't forget, oh, he's been to three tournaments more than Fuzzy. That's the point. He's been. He's he's not just such a strong player. He's also a very committed player. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. what I like. I really respect that. And then yeah. of course you got some of the older school as well. Well, not older school, just some of the more reg- more regular players yeah. we see: Jolteon, yeah. Jelly, VA, AD, two Southampton boys, X One and RT Three. Yeah. Will Will's as well in in both. Will's bloody everywhere. I'd like to, I'd like to know where I am actually. I know um, where I, I know where I am with... exactly to the T. I'm forty four. I think it doesn't matter. I don't think I've been active enough, but I've I haven't placed anywhere so. <laughs> Um, we'll Lawrence, see. You're, you're just eleventh. You're just out of out of view here. Oh, <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course. No, no, no. Um, well, yeah. Well, we'll um, basically, I think in terms of who to watch. Also, of course, shouts to DCJ and PM. He's he's putting he's putting the work. Only in. North East, the only Above, North East there. Better than AD. Yeah, yeah, better than AD. He's put the work in. He's put the work in. You can't argue with that. Going to so a lot AD's of tournaments. He tenth and PM. Yeah, slippery slope. I mean, <laughs> I mean, DC, D, yeah, D, DCJ yeah, though he. Um, hmm? Sorry, I'm interrupting. I was just saying that um, DCJ he went to Smash. He came down to London to Smash Di, and he flew up the same day to go to um. Oh yeah, go he, to he went, what Smash exactly, Beyond the Wall. Yeah, and then he like he placed just outside the top sixteen, if I remember correctly, at um, Smash or Di. Flew up to Scotland and was like, right, okay, I'm gonna win this one now, and he won it. And it was like, yeah, okay, yeah, Dale, yeah. all right, Dale, chill out. Yeah, so <laughs> commitment. You've you've got to respect the commitment. Oh yeah, That's great a big player. Thing. I mean, he played. I played him at um, when when did they come down on MMR two, MMR three, um, MMR three, yeah, MMR three, and um, yeah, I had to play him. I, he nearly beat me. Uh, yeah, I heard about that. Da- and uh, I was Dale and I was like, oh my god, what was, what do I do against Yoshi? <laughs> I, I think Ben was actually in, in awe of Yoshi because like. That's his favourite character. He loves Yoshi so much. I love Yoshi, but I can't play him. Save my life. I can't. Just... But I do love Yoshi. Oh, I was going to give you the old DCJ, which was egg roll, jump out, da- jab, jab, down smash, but you can't do that anymore because his uh, egg roll got nerfed for some uh, reason. You could Come always on. combo with down now, which is always just the best thing ever. Oh, yeah, just tap down on their skull. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fair enough. Yeah. But yeah, those are the standings, and uh, yeah, I think these. I think this coming season is going to really be interesting, especially at the start of the new year, when we're going to have more tournaments, obviously, more travelling. We, we can't. Um, we can't put coins into Beast. That'd be quite funny, though. <laughs> <laughs> none of none of us place therefore. Maybe we could have coins. a coin each for going or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like that. <laughs> Prof, if you can some harder in Project M. <laughs> No, Prof doesn't get any. <laughs> get get, get a consolation, consolation coin. He's, a, he's yeah. at the top. He's not getting anything for Beast, because he's if he does, he's going to get so much. He's going to cash in. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? He's yeah, cashing in. Uh, shall we mention Rolex? or? Oh, yes. Ooh, very, very quickly. Rolex is very, quit. Very, very oh, quickly. Very, very quickly. Has, has, he uh, quit? Mistakes. has he actually quit? Or I thought that was just a joke. Let's be real, right? If he does quit, then what has he got to his legacy? He got top four, where he got beaten by Mewtwo King, 
but he also got beaten in a money match by Prof, who would also beat Music King in PM. So really, let's be, re- let's be real here. Rolex is a fraud. Let's be real. <laughs> no, I, I'm sure I'm sure he's still adamant that he's better than Prof. Wait, People he wasn't, still he wasn't... say in the comments to the video of the money match, they still say, oh, uh, Rolex is clearly better because blah, 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 blah. And I reply to them and I say, what are you thinking? Yeah, what are you, what actually are you on? on? Like, I stayed up until uh, some ungodly hour watching that running match. It was completely worth it because, A, the prof dance came about, which I'm going to do at Beast at some point. But, like... <laughs> well, he is, yeah. <laughs> I think all of, all, all of UK should do the soul dance. Yes. Yeah. Synchronised. <laughs> Synchronised soul dance. Or just play for all, all those the- listening out there, for everyone listening, when you go to Beast, do the salt dance synchronized, uh, please. So yeah, yeah. Rob's going to like do us a quick lesson in the airport. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll all go over. People you know walk by thinking, what the heck is going on here? But you can teach the stewardesses to teach everyone on the yeah. plane <laughs> how to do the salt dance. Amazing. Oh, can we get can we get like can we inform like Lolex, uh, Alex Alexander, and just tell him like, can we have that custom taunt that was made for Prof? Put on snake. Oh yeah, oh, I loved that tone. Yeah, uh, I've so seen it a like, lot. So at one tournament, and it just that is you brought up again. Someone needs to find that on the Smashy K page and just put it to the top. Make it, make it a pin but, post. Um, we need a silent doom. We need silent a... doom, please. Yeah, pseudo, pseudo applause. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, guys, I think we are just about running out of time. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for tuning in to Off the Battlefield. Thank you very much to our special guests, Bullet Bill and Fish Eat Corn. Uh, guys, Thanks do you have anything? Me. Yeah, no problem. Do you guys have anything you want to plug? Uh, I know you guys all want to pro- plug Project Manchester, so do you want, guys want to talk about that quickly? Yeah, sure. So um, we've got Project Manchester, which is our Twitch stream, and that is now sponsored by 8-Bit Planet. So you know, go on twitch.tv forward slash Project Manchester. Have a look at um, our 8-Bit Planet's website as well. So that's www8, that's the number 8, bitsplanet.com. And um, if you go on our Twitch, you can also get a discount code, which is 8-Bits Rare Candy. And uh, I just want to give shout-outs to, uh, to my teammates. So we've got uh, 8BP, um, Slurps, Jake2O, TNT, and, of course, Bullet Bill and myself. So uh, thanks, everyone, for all the support. Cool. And do you guys have any, have any Twitters that you want to put out there? Uh, we don't really use Twitter, but if you oh. want to join our Facebook page, uh, we've, got, we've got Northwest Smash, and we've got um, our tournament um, you know, running at the... Actually, yeah. The and does uh, Dave Dave uses his Twitter? Oh yeah, Dave. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what his Twitter I can't, is. I can't remember where it is. But oh, um, well. yeah, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll get we'll get Twitter one day. Maybe. Yeah. One well, day. We'll, we'll dig all of those up and um and and have them as links in the. Yeah, in... Aaron will put them on the overlay, and of course you can follow myself at Wobbling Scroll, Lorenzo at Lorenzo the Kind. Thank you very much yep. for watching, and we will see you in two weeks' time, guys. Peace. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye.